Hi, and welcome into the Songwriter Sessions. I'm your host, Ryan Panette. Today in studio, we have a very talented singer-songwriter coming out of Boston, Massachusetts, named Greg Darling. Greg's going to play some music and also talk about his music today on the show. But to kick it off, let's have Greg play his original song, Over. I'll be there when the days get long and the nights get cold and the noon gets old. I'll be there when the rain comes down, time stands still, fire burns out. Will you be there beside me, be there to guide me, to show me how? Will you be there behind me, standing behind me, and I turn around? Thank you very much, Greg. That was very, that was very good. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you being here. Um, so, that song over. What? How did how did that song come to be? How did it come to be? Um, well, you asked me to be on the show. I thought I'd like to come up with something new instead of playing the same old stuff all the time. You know, everyone's heard. So I started writing and writing and writing. And um, you know, that one's about. Uh, you know, fickle mind, a fickle heart, you know, when it comes to, you know, love and relationships and stuff like that. And, you, you know, you, you start to change your mind. Does the other person change their mind? Are you guys on the same page? That kind of thing. So that's really what that was all driven from, you know. And, and uh, you know, I'll be there. Will you be there? You know, you'll be there. Will I be there kind of thing. So Gotcha. Nice. So when did you first start playing music? Um, you know, like a lot of kids, I started, you know, fifth grade band. Um, started the trumpet. I was awesome, you know. Um, actually, no, I was actually pretty terrible. Uh, they kicked me down to low brass because I was pretty awful, actually. Um, and then uh, beyond that, 
I must have been about 13 when I picked up a guitar and just started to fool around. Actually, my brother picked up a guitar and I followed suit. And then he quit after about six months and I kind of just kept going. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so when did it turn into you writing your own songs and you actually putting words down on paper? Um, you know, once I could start to form chords, uh, you know, everybody starts off playing their Green Day and their Blink-182 at that age. Um, you know, you start to form songs, you start to, it really comes along with growing up, you know, there's, you know, high school's a tough time, you know, you always want to find a way to express yourself and it's hard to do that and music's a really great release for that kind of stuff and so I guess, you know, I don't know, you start writing and you start playing and you start, I can, you know, putting words together and start, you know, you can say a lot more in a song than you can say out loud, so I guess, you know, early high school, that kind of age. Now, was there any certain event or something that happened or some reason that you wanted to write your first song, or do you remember the first song that you ever wrote? Yeah, Kate Kennedy, <laughs> that girl. No, uh, yeah, no, um, yeah, probably girls, I would say, you know, growing up, and uh, I know I wrote a lot of songs about that girl, and I used her real name, so she sees this, you know. <laughs> it's okay, we're still friends. That's all right. No big deal, I was 14, you know. Um, anyway, yeah, no, uh, you know, growing up and stuff, everything, like I said, you know, it's a great, music's a great release, so. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, you're going to play a couple more songs for us. The first one is going to be Love Will Always Find Its Way, followed by Define Yourself. Okay, so, cool. Take yeah. it away, Greg. If I could only sustain this conversation Find out what's going on in that mind yeah, I don't know if it ever felt wrong yeah, All I know is it never felt right And take me past your eyes Right. 
Very nice. Now, I, I love that line you have in there. I will run away and never look back if you promise me to never stop searching. Yeah. Now, is that something, when you're going to write the song, is that something you start with, or is that something that came with the song, or is that a th thought that you already always had? Because that's a, that's a pretty awesome statement. Yeah, um, yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, really, uh, the way I start to write songs is I start to just play and do all improv and just start shooting out lines, because I feel like that gives me the most organic train of thought, what's going on in my head and stuff like that, and it's a good way to get my words out there. Um, you know, specifically, I don't remember where that line came from, well, right, I know where it came from, but I don't, you know, remember the process saying, all right, I wrote it down, I'm going to do this. Or if it came while writing that song, same, you know, as improv, it probably came through that, you know. So I find that to be a really effective way to get your words out. And, uh, you know, you kind of spit the words first and then make them pretty later, you know, kind of fit it all together. And I know you have, a, you have a method that you just let your webcam run. Yeah. Or, or a voice memo on an iPhone run while you're just playing and yeah. so you can go back and get to something earlier. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, there's so many times that you'll, you know, you'll be writing a song and you'll be playing and, you know, you'll, you'll say, oh, I'll go back to that. Or, you know, even, you know, even minutes or seconds, you can lose melodies and, you know, lyrics and it'll never sound the same way. And you'll try to, you know, find that one line you knew you loved right when you heard it. And then, uh, you know, you'll lose it so easily. So it's really a... Uh, I do that all the time, just uh, you know, voice memos and uh, videos on the iPhone and stuff like that. And it's a great way. I recommend doing it to anybody else who writes that in that method. I mean, everyone has their own way of doing it. So, thanks. Um, so the next song you're gonna play for us is "Define Yourself." Yeah, this song I wrote. Um, let's see, a few years ago. Um, it's about really uh, being your own person and you know trying to figure out who you are. I think I wrote it going into college, which seems suitable. So. Yeah, it goes like this. took a walk down to the harbor just the other day And I screamed at the top of my lungs I told the world, yeah, I told them good Exactly how much I hate being alone Nature, she replied to me, you're way too young to worry about the little things. So turn in, run away, run away, yeah. Just run away, run away, yeah. We cut it down. So you said that was a song you, th you think you wrote going into college. Now yeah. at in, but in college, you obviously you, you played. There was a there's a bigger audience at college. People had a lot of more opportunities to play. Did you play out a lot in high school? Um, you know, no. it's yeah, it's funny actually. I played a lot more in high school, out and about, and playing shows and traveling and stuff than I did actually when I went to college. Um, 
I don't know if it was, uh, you know, meeting all new people and, you know, you, you set up a persona for yourself and it's a lot of pressure, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it was weird. I don't know. It, it, maybe self-conscious, whatever, you know, but I'd rather go out and play in front of strangers versus at college. And it, when I went to college, I was really focused on, you know, you know, getting to know people, getting to know myself, you know, growing up, like that whole thing. So that whole gig, I guess you could say. So uh, it's tough, like, you know, going on playing shows and stuff like that. You don't want to give up weekends and you don't want to travel and stuff like that because you want to be, you know, at college trying to really, uh, you know, enjoy the whole experience, I guess. Right, right. So, so as far as, as songwriting goes, what makes you want to go out or sit down and write a song? Is it, you know, after an awesome weekend with friends or is it after a long day at work that, you know, is there, and is there any one thing that you, you, you know, you come, come home at the end of the day and say, you know what, this happened to me, I'm going to write down and uh, sit down and write a song? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, music's a really good rock. It's funny because, you know, you have so many things going on in your life, um, you know, if, Personally, I just graduated from college, started working in Boston um, as an accountant, you know, and it's, you know, before that I was a college student and before that I was a high school student, and you, you know, and you're changing environments and you're doing this and that and everything else. And music's just one thing that kind of never lets you down. It's kind of like a puppy that greets you at the door, you know. You can always go home, you can always write a song, you can always, you know, and it doesn't even have to be writing a song, it's just playing, you know. You can express yourself just by, you know, sitting down for, you know, as little as, 15 minutes a day and just fooling around on a guitar or fooling around, you know, or whatever you want to, whatever you play, you know what I mean? It's, right. So I think it's just a really good thing to do. And that's, so I guess, you know, when it comes to actually writing a song, you know, I create through that, you know, so if I start to feel it turning into something, you know, then I go, then I run with it a little bit. Now, how, how often do you do that? Sit down and, and just start to play and... Oh, every day. I mean, it's, it's one of those things, like I said, you get home and, you know, you could be cooking dinner, waiting for something to finish or, you know, watching the news or TV or whatever you got going on. And, you know, you sit on your couch and, you know, it's, it becomes, you know, mindless after a while. Guitars are really, you know, that's why I think so many people play it too. It's a really easy, convenient outlet, you know, and you can sit there and just pick on a guitar lightly, you know, with other people in the room or, you know, or not, you know, and while you're watching the news, while you're watching what's going on in the world or while you're, you know, like I said, cooking dinner or, you know, I don't know, whatever, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's like every day, it's just is, it's when is it going to happen? Because it's not really, it doesn't really inconvenience you at all. Now, do you ever have those moments that you, you know, maybe you're sitting at work or, or driving the car and, and you have something pop in your head and you, you know, get, get to the point and say, oh, I wish I could really write this down, but it's... Yeah, not the right time kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I brought home many post-it notes from work <laughs> that have just little, you know, scribbles on it, little lines that, you know, little lyrics and uh, ideas and this is what I like to write a song about or, you know, or, you know, so yeah, you always come up with stuff like that, um, you know, in the car you know, even you can do like, like I said, the video stuff. You can do all acapella, you know, as yeah. well. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, if our viewers at home want to find Greg Darling music, where I know you have a, a YouTube uh, YouTube channel, um, where where can they go to find you? Yeah, um, yeah. YouTube, you can YouTube Greg Darling. I got some old stuff on there. It's probably you know from high school. I got some new stuff on there that you know covers I've been putting up in the past couple of weeks, um, couple months and stuff. I got some collaborations. I worked with uh, Caroline Bateson, who was really talented. Uh, we did a bunch of stuff. I don't know what's on our accounts, but you could surf it. Um, we're all on YouTube. Uh, I'm a little bit old school, which, uh, you know, I still have my MySpace cranking. Um, if we were to do shows and do, you know, any tours or anything like that, or um, anything were to change, you know, uh, that would be the place to look. Um, though I'd have to email myself the password, I think, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you. But there's actually a song on um, if you myspace.com slash Greg Darling. There's a, um, a song I did with Ashley Skeffington. Um, called Matches, and she's very talented, and she actually collaborated and wrote a song. I did most of the music and a couple of the lyrics and tweaked her lyrics a little bit, and she wrote pretty much all these phenomenal lyrics, so um, you can check that out. Um, really should jump on the Facebook wagon, you know, but yeah. uh, we'll see, you know. Now, that's a, that's a, a huge thing that's kind of happening these days of artists aren't necessarily getting into the studio as much anymore. They're putting themselves down in front of a, a webcam, or they're, you know, and they're putting their stuff on Facebook, on on YouTube, on MySpace. You know, how does that how does that play into what you're what you're looking to do, and how has it changed everything really with music? Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly awesome for you know singer songwriter, not so awesome for you know uh, studios and you know people that are trying to make money off of that. Um, it's a really cheap, easy, convenient way to. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect quality. It doesn't have to, um, you know, especially doing live stuff, obviously, it's not going to be all mixed and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, everything, even just from buying a Mac, you get GarageBand set up right when you buy the Mac for no reason, even if you've never picked up an instrument in your life. Right. Um, 
you know, I know a lot of people that, you know, at least do, you know, amateur mixes into that. And I think it's great because it just allows people to have a voice. It allows people to really get out there a lot more. It's so accessible, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's good and bad because you see some, you know, I don't, I don't know, but you see, you know, YouTube videos, the person probably wishes it wasn't captured on film, or, you know, <laughs> but you know yeah. what I mean? You get, you know, I think it's really great for, uh, from when I, you know, YouTube wasn't as huge when we, when I first started playing music and, you know, I remember I used to, uh, I was recording with a kid in his basement who had uh, an eight track mixer and it bounced a CD right out of it. So it was, uh, it's come a long way as far as like home recording and, you know, what's affordable and what's not, you right. know. Studios, I mean, they're expensive. It's expensive to sit down in a studio and I've done a couple studio, you know, sits with a couple of artists and it's, you know, on their dime because, you know, it's, it's expensive. <laughs> right, it's a lot right. of money, so. Right. And a lot more people are moving just to going out and playing live shows. Have recently, have you done any? Have you done any live shows? Yeah, you know, um, a couple open mics here and there. I've been pretty busy with uh, the transition from college into work and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm gonna start picking it up a little bit more. Um, I'm, you know, doing a lot of stuff just online, like we were just talking about. So um, on the YouTube accounts and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I played an open mic in Melrose a few weeks ago, stuff like that. You know, yeah. pretty low key um, compared to what you could be doing. But uh, you know, yeah, this is you know just really a good hobby for me right now. Yeah. So. And now we're going to hear another song from Greg uh, called Pop Bottles. This is a little bit kind of a fun song. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, this one was written a, a little while ago, too. This was a college days, and it was supposed to be just kind of like a more upbeat, you know, and uh, kind of get the, you know, the blood flowing a little bit, you know, versus being all sad. So, all right, here it goes. Sipping champagne, looking over at me. You got too much to say, but you can't find the words to say. You need a guy to sweep you off your feet, and that couldn't possibly be me. Yeah, if only. And we can dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can sing. It goes something like this: it goes a lot of times. La da da da. La da da. La da 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 da. Oh 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 yeah. Oh 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 yeah. You want him, but you want me back. You want a little bit of this. You want a little bit of that. You need to make up. You cluttered, cluttered my eyes. I promise we'll be fine, yeah. Oh, I promise we'll be fine, yeah, yeah. And we still dance, yeah, 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 yeah. And we can sing, go something like as it goes. La da da, la da da da. La da da, la da 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 da. Oh, 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 yeah. It's the way you study my face, lying there in your bed. Maybe it's the way you say my name, like you could not care less. Maybe it's the way you know exactly where I'm going when all I wanna do is stay right here with you and sing. La da da, la da da da. La da da, la da 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 da. Oh 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 yeah. All right, very, very fun and upbeat song. Yeah, yeah, it should be a little, a little bit more uh, uh, upbeat. Yeah, that's a good word. No, when you're when you're going to write a song, does I find a lot of the times it's it's easier to write something that's melancholy or has a kind of a slower melody or yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, especially as a singer songwriter, you know, it's uh, really easy to get kind of thrown into the love song game, you know. And that's I don't know, we're young too. That's a lot that's going on in our lives and. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, it's really whatever you're listening to, I feel like, too, has a really huge influence. I think I was listening to a lot of Jack Johnson, as you can hear, in yep. that kind of song, you know, which he's, he also has some pretty melancholy songs, but, you know, he also has some pretty upbeat ones. So, I don't know, you know, you influence yourself, I guess, with what you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. yeah. Now, would you, other than Jack Johnson, who would you say are the biggest influences on you as a, as a songwriter? Um, you know, I'd have to say number one would be John Mayer. Uh, I think he's totally changed the singer-songwriter game. You know, uh, 
a lot of people, you know, remember him coming into the industry as, you know, your body's a wonderland and that kind of stuff, you know, a guy in the guitar. Um, and, you know, most people don't even know about his blues trio and all the other stuff. And now, in fact, he's, you know, I, in my opinion, one of the greatest guitar players on this planet right, right now. Yep. So it's, um, you know, and, and what you hear on the radio doesn't even, you know, come close to doing justice. So if you really dig deeper, his guitar playing is just fantastic. If you see him live, half the show is the guitar solo. You right, know, yeah. it's, it's spectacular. Um, beyond him... Um, I really like Matt Nathanson, who's a Boston kid. Mm -hmm. um, kid, he's about 40, so <laughs> he's actually not a, you know, but uh, yeah, he's from Boston. Um, I really like him. I like, you know, Jason Mraz. Um, ben Queller's really uh, been pretty big. I like him a lot. I was really into uh, a lot of Death Cab and stuff when I was in high school. Yep. Ben Gibbard, the lead singer of Death Cab, has done a million different projects um, and, you know, his own solo stuff, so. You know, I don't know, whatever I surround myself with, I, you know, I, I, I guess, I don't know, Joshua Radin. There's a whole bunch of people, that Brett Denon, a lot of, you know, I don't know, just really, like, acoustic guys. It's, yeah. it's fun to watch, stuff. So. Now, what are, you, what are you listening to right now? On the way here, what were you, what were you jamming to? What was I jamming to? Well, I zip card here, so I had, uh, I believe it was um, 107.9, whatever that, Kiss 108, yeah. I yeah. don't know, so I had, you know, I think I had some Rihanna going, I don't know, whatever <laughs> was playing on that, I was kind of tapping my feet, I couldn't, Try to figure out how to change the, the um, station, but I couldn't figure it out. So, um, if you were to look on my phone, look at Pandora. A lot of those artists I just named. Um, then there's a lot of artists I put on there from when I was, you know, a lot of uh, pop punky band stuff because you like to listen to your nostalgic music. And, right. Uh, you know, I'm not afraid to listen to some, you know, some good rap and stuff too. You know, I, you know, it all, it's all it's all art, so it's all cool. You know. Right. So, well, we got time for just about one more, um, and I'd like to thank you for coming on today yeah, to the absolutely. first edition of the Songwriter Sessions. Yeah, it's, it's, been, be awesome. it's been a blast. Um, and be sure to be on the lookout for some more Songwriter Sessions coming down the pipe. And you're going to take us out with your original song called Picture. Yep. If I told you I loved you You said to me you never let me go I told you I need you You swear to me You always need me too and Every time you come around I always stop and go Oh wow You're beautiful